I can tell you from experience, that as a product moves from concept to mass production, there are usually compromises in creating a more feasible design, affecting not only things like powertrain, but styling and proportion. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey continues. Ladies and gentlemen, the Acura NSX Concept. All right, we're standing here once again with John Ikeda, the 2013 Detroit Auto Show. And we're looking at the next evolution of the NSX Concept. And John's going to tell us a little bit about what's new here. And, uh, of course, uh, there's an interior actually to look at this year. That's probably the biggest news. Yes. Uh, this year, the biggest thing is the interior. Obviously, last year was just a purely an exterior exercise. But uh, believe it or not, even though it looks very similar, everything is different from packaging. Everything has changed slightly. Um, as we get closer and closer to the production model, we get more and more production-type hard points and whatnot that we have to uh, put into the vehicle. And so this is one step closer uh, to what it could be in the future. But uh, the biggest thing this year for us is we knew we came in here and showed off the exterior a little bit last year, but uh, the interior is one of the highlights of uh, this year's show. So before we dive into the interior, if you just point out a couple things, obviously we've got some new wheels and some a little bit of work on the front end, but if there's a few things you, sh you would like to point out, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, um, every, like I said, everything's been touched up a little bit. Uh, some of the trim pieces and the way the chrome uh, trim pieces work or the plexiglass in front of the grill or the mesh designs themselves, all of those things have been upgraded. And so it's a little bit more, uh, uh, how do you say, more tolerance and things a little more realistic than what we had last year. Uh, gaps, door gaps, things like that are starting to look a little bit more production, if you will. Um, obviously, what's making this car look really more realistic is the door opening, and it's an inside-outside mock-up. So, uh, you know, you could get in this thing uh, and see what it will look like from the inside out. That's always exciting. Um, some of the things on the side, we've, we're trying very hard to hold on to the flying buttress uh, still. Obviously, one of the key things as we develop this vehicle in our studio is the size of the intake. And I'm going to give the TOV guys a little extra here. But, you know, every time we up the horsepower or something, we tweak the engine, we always have to deal with the airflow going in, cooling. And so those things seem, uh, seem to move around a little bit. And so don't be surprised if it evolves a little bit more even beyond this as we go forward. But uh, it's all good stuff. It's all to make the car perform better, drive faster. And uh, it's almost like a jet fighter designing it. So the function part is so strong when you're trying to make a sports car. And so, uh, you know. It's we're progressing, uh, um, making the car more uh, production, and uh, it's one of the we froze it in time, and, and, and here it is for now. Yeah. So it looks like you have a, a carbon fiber look, at least a carbon fiber roof panel. Um, are you, is there a lot of consideration for carbon fiber use in the production car? Uh, lots and lots of uh, things that have to be dealt with in terms of keeping the car light as possible. So. It's very exciting in the studio right now because we're dealing with all kinds of new materials, lightweight materials, uh, like carbon fiber and things like that, aluminum, how do we attach it to the aluminum bracing, things like that all come into play. And uh, things we easily don't deal with uh, doing regular production cars. So it's all kind of a learning experience for us, but having a vehicle like this inside of our studio is one of the most exciting things I could, I could tell you. I mean, having that full-size clay gets all the designers going, coming into work and seeing this thing on there has probably helped the brand new MDX we have over there look better and and, and it, it gets all the other cars that we're working in there uh, more exciting. So uh, it's fantastic to be uh, working at this time at uh, Acura right now. Yep. Sounded like in the presentation we might still be about two years away from actually getting to drive one of these. Is that your understanding? 
Well, you know, I'm, I'm dying to drive one of these things too myself, but uh, they're making mules and things and, and guys are starting to test all this vehicle out. And so uh, the test guys are the first guys to really get to really start to feel the dynamics of the vehicle and whatnot. But uh, yeah, uh, it's still two years out. Um, we froze it in time right now. It will evolve some more as we go, but uh, it's going to be a good looking car and it's going to be very, very exciting. So we can expect probably same time next year to see yet another evolution of this, possibly in a prototype form? Don't know. Uh, if uh, the powers that be would want to see it that way, then we might. If not, we won't. I can't speculate one way or another on that right now. All right. Um, do you want to talk anything about the interesting wheel design? It doesn't look like really something that might be uh, production feasible but it's, it's a pretty interesting look. It's an interesting look as we try to develop uh, aero if you go look at the MDX wheel too there's all kinds of aerodynamic things that we need to consider uh, around the wheels and so designers are looking at new ways to do wheels that perform well in aerodynamics and still keep some interest uh, new design if you will so yeah it's, it's this is one iteration of a designer trying to get some idea in. Uh, we obviously haven't tested out functionally yet, but uh, I will say this in the video, when this thing is spinning, it looks fantastic. Yeah. So that's one thing that uh, we always want to look at as we do our wheels. Now, I mean, this is a very nice design language I've seen here, and it's there's a little bit of it you, you can see in the uh, MDX, but what about a more affordable sports car or coupe that might be borrowing some of this? Well, I will say this. Um, if you look at the cars and what we're doing with the brand, there's definitely a nice hierarchy to the sedan series that we, we're working on. We see the SUV happening. Now we have a, a, a champion for the sports. And so I'm hoping to fill out those areas, but you know, those things are not made by decisions by people like myself, but enthusiasts like yourselves and myself, we would like to see that also. Are, the, are there any more details in the exterior you'd like to point out before we move to the inside? Similar amount of changes in the rear as the front, some detail changes in the center, but uh, nothing really dramatic. We really want to preserve what we started out with as we put more feasibility into the car. And so uh, the, the key is to how much can we keep, how much can we evolve, and make sure that the evolution is happening for function reasons. You know, that's what we want more than anything is that when a function plays out on a supercar, to drive an intake to be bigger or something like that's always exciting. So uh, those are those are the evolutions that we're going to be looking for. Okay. Well, let's have a look at this interior now. It's, uh, it's really nice looking. I see a nice leather suede combination with some more carbon fiber, um, yes. mesh back seats. Yeah, it, it, interior also. Um, one of the key things that we want to focus on with the interior is that the original NSX always had great visibility and. It was able. It was a, almost like an everyday kind of uh, supercar, and that kind of heritage we want to focus on. So we're working with thin pillars and and lowering the dash and having to have a good visibility. But uh, it is a, a, a supercar of the future. So you're looking at some new technologies that we haven't looked at. You know, in terms of uh, the uh, switches and and things like that. This is one of the iterations that we have right now. Currently, there's others, but. Um, Key things from a packaging point of view is that it's functional, it's, the visibility is good, that all of the switches and things are there to assist the driver to have a very, very exciting driving experience. Now, one thing I noticed right away is really tall center tunnel kind of bisecting the, the cockpit here. Um, is that uh, there for aesthetic purposes or is it actually functional, like possibly a battery pack location in the tunnel, or is that kind of the design choice there? Yes, it would be the answer to that. I think uh, there is batteries and things to consider. Uh, it's higher, things are closer to you, uh, that might be something. But um, as we develop the vehicle, all in this area, what we really, really want to key in on is the functionality. So if the switches are too high or it gets in the way, I'm sure we're still moving things around a little bit. There are other proposals with areas that like that that we're looking at right now. But uh, overall, as one theme for this uh, interior that uh, we're showing today. Uh, we're, we really feel there's some nice fresh look about the car that uh, it's as advanced as what the outside is bringing and we're really happy about the fact that uh, we could look at the totality of the car because it just makes it more so much more real right. and uh, we're getting closer to that. Yeah. That's a very nice job. I noticed it appears you have a uh, 
primary meter panel is an LCD display, mm -hmm. and then you have two analog gauges flanking it. So the idea is to have uh, multiple displays depending on what you're doing? Um, I'm sure with all the switches, you're going to be able to choose what you want to see, when you want to see it. All of those things are going to be worked out. Uh, one thing for interior is, just like with the exterior, with the carbon fibers and things, it's really fun and exciting for designers to be dealing with real materials like this that are there for functional reasons. And uh, it's, it's, it's a new experience for interior designers as well as exterior designers. And it, it's, it's just, you know, just like the outside the interior guys are having. And the materials group, they're all having an exciting time looking into all these new, new, new ways of doing things. Yeah. All right, no, sorry, John, we got cut short up there for a second. But I uh, just want to say thanks for the update. The car looks great. Looking forward to see uh, progress in another year. Oh, yeah, we're anytime. I mean, the TOV gang, we've been together th for a while now. We just got done talking about, you know, since the TL and all that. But uh, the brand is obviously going in the right direction. Uh, all the enthusiasts out there, we want to we want to bring more enthusiasm into the brand. And uh, this is the Halo car, and we're going to continue to work on this. All right, so thanks. Great. So now we're going to move over to the MDX. All right, thank you.